uh, when the Chinese ambassador in Paris mentioned about re-education of the Taiwanese people after reunification. I think the Taiwanese people are going to love him out of town after uh, that kind of statement. Réunification, on va faire une réunification. Réunification des valeurs républicaines. Pourquoi on fait ça? 吴钊燮表示，台湾人对于中共宣称的台湾问题白皮书也是不屑一顾，因为民主和自由早已深植在台湾人的心中。台湾人会对中共片面改变现状的做法说不。Uh, the reason is very clear. We live in a free society, and freedom and democracy has become part of our lives, and we believe in that. And if the Chinese government wants to change that, the Taiwanese people are going to say, no way. 当被问到美国众议院议长佩洛西访台引发中共一连串的动作，吴钊燮指出，即使没有佩洛西访台，中共还是会以其他借口打压台湾。台湾将坚守正确的价值，不能惧怕中共的威胁。如果对中共唯命是从，将得不到国际社会的任何支持。And if we all listen to China, because we are afraid that China might get angry. Taiwan is not going to get any support from the international community, and the international community is not going to provide support to Taiwan at the time that Taiwan needs it. 吴钊燮在访问的最后强调，看看中共在东海、南海，还有与所罗门群岛签约的种种动作，就知道中共的野心绝对不只有台湾。因此，全球的民主阵营应该团结一致，支持台湾，并贺阻中共的全球野心。新唐人亚太电视江子阳编译。Recently, several staff members of Xincheng Holdings used violence against the homeowners who were defending their rights. The incident then aroused public's outrage. According to Chinese media cover news, on August 9th, some homeowners went to the Wu Yu Plaza Project Sales Center in the Yubei District to complain about the quality of their houses. They wanted to hear an explanation from the project's developer, Xincheng Holdings. The video shows many female owners sitting on a sofa in the sales area of Wu Yu Plaza in Chongqing's Yubei District. They refused to leave. Suddenly, a group of five or six men in white shirts appeared and overturned the sofa together. The women were directly knocked to the ground. Some resulted injured and were bleeding. It is reported that Xincheng Holdings built Wu Yu Plaza. It's a commercial supporting facility for the Central Park of about 300,000 square meters. It's also Xincheng Holdings' first Class A project in the Southwest. Additionally, the sales performance is not promising. The total contracted sales fell 43.48 percent from January to July compared to last year's period. On August 11th, the police of Tian Shangqiao Police Station in Yubei District said the case is now under investigation. Netizens then expressed their anger after the news broke out. One user said, "Actually, for many years, the developer has become a bully." Another wrote, "Severely punish criminal groups and give justice to victims." We said, "Two sides of one China." This kind of history statement and legal argument is a fact. It is a fact. No one can change it. The Chinese people's history is irreversible. I think. 这是解决台湾问题一个新的历史方位，台独不可能得逞，台湾的前途在于祖国的统一，那台湾同胞的福祉在于民族的复兴。这个是表明我们国家的态度，就像世界严肃的表明，台湾自古是我们中国的领土，世界上只有一个中国。白皮书内容丰富详实，以客观的事实为基础，对台湾问题的历史经纬和发展脉络呢做了阐述，说服力强，明确表达了中国共产党和中国人民实现祖国统一的这个坚强决心和意志，令人充满希望和信心。On August 10th, the Ximian District Court of Ya'an City, Sichuan Province, held a public hearing on a case involving a criminal complaint of incidental civil interest against the operator and employee of a county hot pot restaurant. He was accused of allegedly producing and selling toxic and harmful food. On August 12th, a Red Star News reporter was informed of the result of the first hearing. Yu, the hot pot restaurant operator, was sentenced to 10 years in prison, ordered to pay punitive damages of 2.2 million dollars, and to apologize to the public in municipal and Red Star News media. 
The court said that this is the first case in Ya'an to impose punitive damages of 10 million yuan in monitoring and punishing crimes against food safety. The court found that since August 2015, Yu Mo, the operator of a hot pot restaurant, instructed and arranged for the venue's waiters, Hu Mo and Peng Mo, to refine waste oil, commonly known as gutter oil or recycled oil, into hot pots to reduce operating costs and increase the taste of the hot pots, which are then sold to customers for consumption. On January 13, 2022, after receiving relevant information, the public security police contacted Yu by phone to investigate. After learning about the case, he confessed that he had instructed his staff to refine the recycled oil and sell it to customers who came to the premises. According to the audit, as of the incident, the total amount of sales of recycled oil pot bottoms at the hot pot restaurant was $219,000. The Ximian County Court tried the case. The criminal and civil first instant sentences were handed down on August 10, 2022. As for the criminal punishment, the boss, Yu Mo, and the waiters, Peng Mo and Hu Mo, were sentenced to prison terms of 10 years, 5 years, and 2 years, respectively, for the crime of producing and selling poisonous and harmful food. The incidental civil public interest litigation, the operator of the hot pot restaurant, Yu Mo, was ordered to pay punitive damages of $2.2 million and to apologize to the public in the media at the municipal level and in... Re- in 1991, a massive U.S.-led coalition, including NATO allies and Middle East nations, initiated an offensive and started the Gulf War in response to Iraq's invasion of Kuwait. As one of the shortest conflicts in U.S. history, it brought catastrophic consequences for Iraq. According to the Project on Defense Alternative Study, between 20,000 and 26,000 Iraqi military personnel were killed in the conflict while 75,000 others were wounded. But for the U.S., it was a success. The war helped restore American military hegemony, consolidate its control of oil, and defend the dominant position of the dollar. The United States was even able to let others pay for the bulk of the cost of war. The U.S. Department of Defense has estimated the cost of the Gulf War at $61 billion, with the U.S. providing only 11% of that. Kuwait, Saudi Arabia, and other Gulf states covered $36 billion. Germany and Japan covered $16 billion. When I was 15 years old, my parents decided to take me on a family trip to China. Little did I know that trip was about to change the way I see the world. Up until the moment that I arrived to China, I never really understood the concept of the word prejudice. In school, teachers would talk about it every now and then, but I never considered to have any prejudice myself. But there I was, realizing that most of the things I believed about this country weren't true. (laughs) And I loved it. What I found instead turned out to be one of the most impressive places I had visited in my entire life. Suddenly China was on the verge of eradicating extreme poverty and it was one of the safest places I'd ever been to. Coming from a place in which people are used to look over their shoulders, I couldn't ask for more. But there was lots more. Right away, I knew I had to stay and learn. If the Chinese people had achieved so much in such a short period, why couldn't my country do it as well? Both places are rich in history, culture, and natural resources. We have endured hardships and injustices from other nations. Mexico will pay for the wall. But eventually ended rising up. We have very similar values as well. There is nothing more important for Chinese and Latin American people than family and nation. We care for our people and our elders as no one else does. I cannot help to imagine what would eventually happen if we work together for a coming future of the human race. Unfortunately, there is one more thing. Both countries are victims of prejudice as well. But after spending so much time in both countries, I have realized the world is often way different to what they portrayed in the news. So maybe it's time to start questioning the media and to start finding out on our own. It's time to start learning from each other instead of criticizing.
Time to stop seeing the world as a divided place and to start working together for a common future as a human race. Until then, our vision of this world will continue to be shaped by news outlets and we will see our brothers and sisters as them instead of us. In the end, we are all humans and if we dare to go past our prejudices, we will realize that we are all part of the human race. Guatimala 政治新闻网站 Political指出，德国这几个月来在制裁俄国相当消极，加上德国总理肖兹十一日被问及若共军犯台，德国能否担得起制裁中共时避而不答，被认为德国在经济上对中国的仰赖更甚对俄国。届时恐难对北京强